Hello everyone, welcome once again in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Amen, and I am Brother Scott, bringing you yet another daily Baptist Bread devotional. And today is Sunday, June 30th, the last day of June, and we are halfway through the year. And we will be getting into the second half of the year, starting tomorrow. Amen. So, let us get started, and today's topic is titled, Speaking the Truth in Love, and the verse is from Ephesians 4, 15, where it says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, Ephesians four fifteen, and the author for today's Devotional is TM, that is short for TM, let's look down here, that is Tom Malone, and it says here is, he's deceased, gone to be with the Lord, and he was from Pontiac, Michigan, <clears throat> so he is with the Lord, amen, praise the Lord for that, alright, so he starts off with the devotional today saying, there is nothing more nauseating today than to hear a lot of the these so-called modernists. There is nothing modern about them. <laughs> they are as old as the day Satan in his serpentine form went with his subtle unbelief into the Garden of Eden to bring about the fall of the human race. Modernists say, We believe in the teachings of Jesus. We do not believe in a glory uh, a go a, we do not believe in a gory slaughterhouse bloody religion we believe in ethics of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus dear friends remember it was the son of god who said ye must be born again right john 3 7 it was the holy spotless son of god who said except ye eat of the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink uh, his blood, ye have no life in you. John six fifty three b Don't you say, don't you say you believe in the teaching of Jesus, unless you believe in salvation through the medium of the bloody cross and the Son of God nailed to it? Don't you, don't you say you believe in the teaching of Jesus, unless you believe in being born from above by the regenerating miracle of God's Holy Spirit. Don't you say you believe in the teaching of Jesus unless you believe in a literal bodily resurrection, an empty tomb, an occupied throne, and the coming of Jesus in the clouds of glory? Right, so don't say you believe in the teaching of Jesus unless you believe all this other stuff about the literal bodily resurrection an empty tomb and occupied throne and the coming of Jesus in the clouds of glory. Amen. The teaching of Jesus is the strongest teaching the world has ever heard, and no teacher or preacher ever spoke any stronger than Jesus. Amen. Because he is God manifest in the flesh, so he should know what he's about to do. <laughs> Amen. And how you need to be saved by trusting him as your Savior. No wonder they turned and went away, John six sixty six. He spoke in love, but he spoke the truth. Amen. So he spoke in love, but he spoke the truth. And sometimes people take it the wrong way, saying, You're hateful. What? what? Je Jesus doesn't hate me. Jesus loves me. Well, Jesus loves everybody, even those people that are burning in hellfire right now. But they chose to reject him as their savior. And if you choose to reject Jesus as your savior, you will burn in an everlasting hellfire for all eternity. But that doesn't mean that God doesn't still love you. But there's nothing he can do for you now because you chose not to receive him while you were on this earth. And then you go and you'll die in your sin. And then you'll end up burning for all eternity. And that's the sad truth. But it is the truth. And Jesus talks more about hellfire and then of heaven in the Bible, and he warns you not to go there. I mean, he always sends a warning before he sends the wrath down, and that's what he's doing by 
using all of us who are saved and born again to go out there and tell you, if you're not saved and you're watching this broadcast, that you need to be saved because if you're not saved, you will die in your sin and you will end up in hellfire and then you will end up under God's judgment and he will judge you for what you did on this earth with Jesus Christ and you will try to stand before him and say, look at all these things I did for you and he'll say, nope, sorry, you didn't believe in my only begotten son who is the way, the truth, and the life and no man cometh to the Father but by him. And you didn't want to believe him, so you're going to be cast into everlasting lake of fire for all eternity. And I wanted to save you while you were on this earth. I sent out all these preachers and these people to witness to you and tell you about Jesus and tell you the truth that you can only be saved by his precious holy blood and be justified and be redeemed. Amen. So if you don't trust him today as your savior and you die in your sin, well... That's it for you, friend, and so many people have already done that, and hope that you, uh, you'll uh, repent and trust Jesus as your Savior, and if you don't know what repentance is, that means turning from what you're trusting in, turning from trusting in yourself, your idols, your church membership, your water baptism, whatever it is you're trusting in, and trust in Jesus Christ, amen, and he will save your soul, amen. So that is it, speaking the truth in love, and love does hurt sometimes, but we do love you, friend, and we don't want you to die in your sin, and God certainly loves you. He said that he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance and put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ alone. Amen. So hope you'll do that today, and if you're saved and you've gone astray, Hope that this will be an encouragement to you to get back on track. Get up and dust yourself off and be like, Alright, Lord, I know I've done some stuff that's bad, but I repent and I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to get up and I know you can use me again. might not be the same way you used me in the past, but you can still use your friend in some way. If you'll just humble yourself and turn back to God if you've walked away from him. Because you can't walk far enough. Even Jonah tried to flee God's presence, and God said, nope, <laughs> not going to happen. You got to get back up and go and run back to Jesus as fast as you can. Amen. Because he never leaves and forsakes you. It's always us that tend to leave and forsake him. So if you've done so today, hope that you'll get back on track. Amen. All right. Well, now that we're done with the devotional, let us get into the Bible reading, and we will continue in Acts chapter 10, and we'll be going through the rest of the chapter. Let's see, we are in Acts chapter 10, and verse 23 is where we left off, so we will go ahead and read verse 24, and we'll just go ahead and read the rest of the chapter. So let's get into the rest of 20, uh, Acts 10. Starting in verse 24, and we were just talking about, um, we were at, we were talking, we were with Peter and Cornelius, and that's where we left off, where it said, um, then called they, he them in and lodged them, and on the morrow Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him, and, and the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him, and fell down at his feet, and worshipped him. Uh, here we go. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. No pope or priest will ever tell you to do that. They want you to bow down and kiss their ring because they think they're somebody special, think that they're God or something. Well, Peter Peter said to stand up and not to worship him. <laughs> People think that Peter was the first pope. Well, uh, Peter did a lot of a lot of stuff that that was uh sinful and and against the Lord and and he uh denied the Lord thrice. So, just remember that when you start thinking that Peter was the first pope. Well, this is one of those things that Peter did. He said not to worship him, but to worship God. 
Amen. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not uh, call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I was set forth, or set for, or sent for, as soon as I was sent for, sorry, I ask therefore uh, for what intent ye have sent for me. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thy alm, thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send, therefore, to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here present before God, to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Right. But in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word, I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea, and began from Ju uh, Galilee, after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him, and we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hung, hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people, and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the uh, prophets witness, that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. When Peter uh, yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God then answered Peter can any man for, uh, forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Amen. So they did differently back then because they didn't have the New Testament. So they had to do things like this. But this was just a transitional book. A lot of people get uh, all stumped up and... and uh, all sorts of false, false doctrines out of this this book of Acts because they don't know how to rightly divide it and know how to discern that this was what was going on at the time because the apostles and the disciples didn't have the New Testament, so they were given these gifts to tell people. And when we talk about the gifts of tongues, they're talking about other languages, not some unknown uh, yabba dabba do scooby doo Woohoo, you know, type of thing, you know, blah, 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 you know, nothing like that. It was a known language that those people knew that God gave them the gift to speak those languages to those people that they would understand what they were saying. And if you want to know more about that, I would recommend getting.
Brother James' Knox book on signs, wonders, and miracles. And you will get to read it and understand it more. And hopefully it will help you if you struggle with, with uh, the things in the book of Acts. Because he goes through all that stuff about tongues and gifts and miracles and healing and all that stuff. So I highly recommend you get that book. And you can find it at the church website at www dot jameswnox dot org and the title of the book is signs wonders and miracles amen so i would recommend you get that book if you have any disagreements about what i'm reading here or you think that speaking in tongues is some kind of gift that is still for today well that is a known language that you learn by studying it not some yabba dabba babble babble um stuff about, you know, oh, I'm speaking in tongues, okay, <laughs> if you say so, but Paul even said that, you know, I would rather speak ten words of a known language than a thousand words of some language, and people think I'm mad because they're walking into the church service, and I'm speaking in some unknown tongue, and they're like, what, what, oh, that guy's crazy, what's going on here, we need to get out of here, Man, this is crazy. What's what's wrong with these people? They must be possessed with a devil or something. <laughs> so, there you go. Yeah. That was my little presentation on some of the tongues and how we don't use some unknown tongue. It's always different languages, whether it be Spanish or English or German or whatever. And then you should always have an interpreter to interpret that language for those that don't speak that language. So somebody is up there interpreting it for you if you're speaking that language <laughs> for those that speak that language and then for those that don't speak that language to have somebody up there interpreting into that language whether it be English or Spanish or German or whatever. I mean, <laughs> so there you have it. Amen. All right. Well, that is the end of chapter 10 and... Tomorrow, Lord willing, we will dive into chapter 11 with tomorrow's topic. Amen. As we start into the July Baptist Bread devotionals. Amen. So hopefully you'll tune in tomorrow. And I will wrap it up for today. And thank you all for watching. And hope you have a great and enjoyable rest of your day. And remember, only Jesus Christ saves sinners. So hope you'll trust him today as your Savior. Alright, well until next time. I am Brother Scott signing off, and we'll see you, Lord willing, tomorrow. Amen. All right, thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.